Hello, everybody, and welcome to our daily two on your side town hall. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Kate Welshofer and I'm Michael Wooten. Today we are going to answer some of your questions that you've texted to us. As always, we like to start with this important reminder. 849 2200 is the number to text ahead this half hour. Where's the relief? It's been many months since the last COVID relief bill passed in Washington, D.C. The economy is still in terrible shape. People are hurting. Businesses are broke. A congressman is going to join us to say why he, despite all of that, is hopeful to end the gridlock. How in the world do you accomplish that, Kate? A very good question there. Plus, drive through testing. We're getting answers for a viewer about this option for people looking to see if they have the virus. And then later on, erasing student loan debt. A live guest will join us to talk about that controversial proposal. All right, first up, though, polls show that the vast majority of the public from both parties and from all regions of the country support another round of aid from the federal government to help out as this pandemic rages on. Yeah, despite that, there has not been an agreement in any way in many months, and we're soon going to have an election. The big question is time up. Well, the Problem Solvers Caucus in the U.S. House, led by local representative Tom Reed, thinks there is still still a glimmer of hope. Michael. Yeah, that group put out a relief bill proposal that has gotten a lot of talk in the national media over the past week or two. But can anything realistically get done? And look who's here. Joining us now is Congressman Tom Reed, Republican re representing the Southern Tier. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be with you, Kate. Thanks for having me on. Congressman, we have a lot of questions about your COVID relief bill, uh, but I want to start with the big picture. Your proposal is bipartisan. You lead the Problem Solvers Caucus, but as broken as Washington was before, a, a lot, it seems, has changed over just the past several days following the passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, four years ago, we all know the Republican Party said 10 months before the election, let the voters decide on the next Supreme Court Justice. Now, just weeks before the election, it's a different standard. Uh, forget the vote, just pass through this new justice. Um, we've never as a country filled an open seat on the high court this close to an election ever. So Democrats are expected to respond. I want to know from you, what is the end game in this? And isn't it harder for you to pass your bill today than even a week ago? Well, you know, obviously with the passing of Justice Ginsburg, you, you first have to recognize uh, her life. Uh, she truly was uh, an icon on the bench and I uh, had the opportunity to talk to her a few times. And, and I will just tell you, she was, she had a spark and uh, I, I uh, recognize her, her, uh, her longstanding tenure on the bench. And really do appreciate uh, her legacy. Uh, but as we deal with this issue, you know, obviously the Senate's gonna have to be dealing with this and the president's gonna make his decision. And it, it obviously adds another thing to the plate and it's gonna divide uh, the country further, in my humble opinion, but people are still suffering. And that's where our package is so important that we get this passed and we help people rather than engage in further political division uh, that has caused us not to get to a package today. Well, let's talk about that plan. It's about one and a half trillion dollars. It's less than what Democrats want, but more than what Republicans proposed. So what is in this bill that you can cobble together enough of those votes from both sides? Well, what we did is uh, we put together the package based on what the American people need for the foreseeable future. And it came out to be one point five trillion dollars. And we also did some adjustments based on where the virus is uh, uh, come March, uh, that we look at the hospitalizations and we look at the status of the vaccine. So it could go down to one point three trillion. It could go up to two trillion dollars. But it's all based on the conditions of the, that, the disaster associated with the virus. And, you know, where we see agreement is, you know, people are suffering things like the Paycheck Protection Program unemployment uh, benefits, things uh, like for our agricultural industry, things for childcare and for our K through 12 and for higher education institutions. So that brings people together. And we did this in six weeks, but I will tell you, uh, we have uh, really shown, I believe, that there is bipartisan agreement here and our leaders need to get in the room, do their job as members of Congress and let's get a deal done for the people back home rather than continuing to play politics. Congressman Reed, to get something approved, you need not only the House where you serve and also the Senate, but you also need the White House. Uh, I said before on this show, it seems that another round of $1,200 stimulus checks for most Americans would be kind of a boost for President Trump and a lot of other politicians right before an election. Uh, why hasn't the White House been out front and center helping you push this through? Well, if you watched uh, Mark Meadows at uh, multiple press events, as well as the press secretary for the White House and the president himself, 
uh, referenced the Problem Solvers Caucus uh, proposal as a, a good package uh, that, that uh, could be uh, the framework. Uh, and that's what it's meant to be, is a framework. We know that the uh, lead negotiators have to finish this off, that they have to be in the room to cut that final deal to get it through the Senate and get it through the House. And so, you know, I watched the president lean into it. I watched uh, uh, the chief of staff, as well as the press secretary for the White House, lean into it. I saw Mitch McConnell offer some positive comments. I heard the speaker say, we're not leaving here uh, until we get a COVID deal done. I take them at their word. Let's get them back in the room, finish this deal. We gave a framework and laid the foundation for it, and we changed the narrative. They were, it was dead on arrival. They weren't talking. And as Mark Meadows said, the chief of staff to the president, we did more in the Problem Solvers Caucus in 72 hours than, for, than they did in the last 72 days on their own. As far as helping people, Congressman, generally speaking, your party is against providing billions to state and local governments that are pretty much broke. You've supported a move like that. And here in New York, many of our communities layoffs pretty much inevitable because the, unless there is some kind of federal help available to people. So that's talking about fewer police officers, firefighters, health care workers. How are you working to convince your fellow Republicans that this wouldn't be a blue state bailout, but instead is something that could save a lot of jobs and help a lot of New Yorkers? So how we got people together on the state and local issue is we said, you know what, good government demands accountability on these issues. So we broke it down into two buckets. And we said for local governments and, to, and for state government, show the map, show the receipts when it comes to actual expenses related to COVID-19 response, like a natural disaster, like a hurricane. Like when you, when you have that damage and we stand with our local governments and our state governments, they show the receipts, we reimburse them uh, at the federal government. Same thing in regards to the loss of revenue associated with local governments. We wanna make sure the books are audited, that they're certified, and that you don't see the gains coming out of Albany where people are throwing $60 billion of lost revenue around like it's chump change. We wanna make sure that those numbers are audited, make sure the books are audited, and if you have that loss of revenue, pre-COVID-19, and then comparing it to the COVID-19 impact, then we'll stand with you and provide that assistance. That brought people together. That demanded, that accountability for the American taxpayer uh, got a response that was positive, and we showed, because 75% of us had agreed in the Problem Solver Caucus to support it. That means 75% of my Republican colleagues uh, stood with us to support this. You mentioned PPP earlier. We know that a lot of small businesses are right now, right now on the brink of closure. You also have millions of people still unemployed. Others can't pay their rent, pay their mortgage. Do you get a sense that your colleagues in Washington on both sides of the aisle understand the true pain across the country? Because we are hearing about a lot of things in D.C. right now, and not much of it is about a stimulus. You know, I, I hope they do. I know I do. Uh, you know, I, I go back to the district. I was just in the district uh, this weekend, heard the same thing uh, that you're, you're articulating. I look people in the eye. I care about these people. And I tell people all the time here who stay here in D.C. and focus more on the politics of D.C. And, and engaging in that process, you need to talk to the people you represent. You have to listen to the people you represent. And if you do that, there, there's not a human being here in D.C. that I don't think would respond positively. Uh, to that need uh, that, that they would hear. And so that's what I try to do. And I carry those voices. I carry that back here to my colleagues. And I agree with you. There's a lot of pain out there still related to this COVID-19 situation. And, you know, what we could do is we could also be a little bit more targeted. I heard the Treasury Secretary, who we've been communicating with and others uh, with in regards to if we need to narrow the package down, maybe we can do a little better job of targeting the relief to uh, areas that are in most of need. And, and that's something I'm open to. If that brings people together, let's have the conversation and get it done. And finally, let's look ahead and talk a little about how you're going to do that. What's the game plan of trying to get enough votes for this package in the House and then in the Senate? So what we're working on is obviously direct communication with the White House, the Senate, and the House. We've been involved in this uh, uh, here for the last six weeks, and then especially the last week and over the weekend. And uh, so we're going to use every opportunity. Uh, you know, we have, we have to fund the government come October 1st. That is a vehicle that could potentially uh, for, be a forcing mechanism uh, for this to provide some additional relief uh, uh, to get taken care of. And then also, uh, don't lose sight of the fact that the speaker said, uh, we're not leaving until we do a package uh, for COVID-19 relief. And so we're going to hold her accountable uh, to those words. And that's not just me on the Republican side speaking. These are Democratic colleagues of me that have spoken loudly and clearly on the record to press that they're demanding that the Democratic leadership listen and make sure that we stay here until we get the job done. 
All of this happening as the pandemic continues and as we inch closer to a general election. Congressman Tom Reed is a Republican representing the southern tier here in western New York. I know it is a busy day with votes happening there on Capitol Hill. I know you're in between them. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing your views. Great to be with you as always. Thank you, Mike. Kate, it is one of the few things that unites us as Americans right now, generally, that people would overwhelmingly like to see another relief bill come out of Washington, no matter your political party or where you are, and they just aren't getting it done. Absolutely, and I think along with that, what people would like is action. When you yeah. have this agreement of, yes, something needs to be done, okay, let's do something. Let's figure it out. Right.